Hello everyone, Pally Tub here, and welcome back to Rogue Legacy 2. We have a Dwarven Ronin named Lady Trist the Third, with Dwarfism and the Antique of the Glowing Ember. An incredibly strong antique, especially for a character that can hit as hard as the Ronin. In between episodes, while I was waiting for the previous episode to render, I actually completed the two masters challenge on the Ronin. I'm gonna save the footage for that for the very end of this episode. I'll show you exactly what that looked like. I didn't commentate it, it was just the boss attempt. So if you wanna see it, that'll be at the very, very end. The reason we're back in this room is because I just noticed that a lot of these are locked, but this one is hidden. The woman quietly enters the back of a pizza store with a stack of large wicker plates. She sets them aside and stoops to gather a new pile, freshly painted red and white. The store is now in shambles with the entrance sealed by a crack at the base of the wall, barely large enough for a child to crawl through, betrays the facade. That was the dwarven scar that I was trying to show you guys a few episodes ago. You know the thumbnail where I circled a guy and put, pointed a red arrow at him? The YouTube thumbnail I've always wanted to make. Well, it turns out, I think what you have to do is kill the boss because we still don't have the third one unlocked for us. But if we go to the sun tower, we unlocked this teleporter a little while ago and then descend, we should be able to unlock that scar now and unlock yet another challenge now. Genuine mistake, I didn't mean to clickbait you guys on that previous video, but here it is. I did show you how to do it. Now we're just doing it again with the actual scar being here. Draw it to your cheek. Both eyes open, square your stance, breathe out while releasing. Eyes on the target, adjust for the wind, and don't look down when redrawing. Too slow, do it faster, faster, faster! That's too much, I can't keep it up. Gregory is going to fail me again. I'll never be good enough to be recruited. And that's how you unlock the scar in Act 2. We're back in the Kruglouian Plateau with a Ronin to boot. We should annihilate everything in front of us. One really funny thing to point out here, because we're a Dwarven Ronin, obviously we're a lot smaller in stature. However, <laughs> that means the range at which we deal critical damage to enemies is much closer to us. So it's actually like... So far, it seems like a little bit easier for me to space out when we're actually fighting our enemies. I did equip another Magnesis rune. That's our second one in between episodes, or it may have been at the tail end of the last episode. Truthfully, I don't remember. All that does is make it so coins and stuff like that have a much easier time making their way over to us. My soldiers are good people, Z. They're just scared. They've spent their whole life training so they could provide for their families. Not everyone can throw it all away. When the time comes, I'll do my best to pull the guards away from the fight, but I can't move them all. There will be fighting on the bridge, and casualties will be unavoidable. I can help train any rebels you've gathered, give them a fighting chance, but I'll only do this under certain conditions. I will not fight. I'll train the villagers, but I cannot turn my sword against my own men. If we lose, we must disband the rebels. No one leaves a war unscathed, but the estuaries will look kindly on a clean surrender. I can ensure it. It comes down to that. And finally, you don't join the fight either. You are no use to the rebels dead, and this way I can be sure that you're safe. Remember, all great generals die from old age. This may not be what you wanted, but those are my conditions. And I hope you find this arrangement acceptable. On our very first run through the plateau, we were on another Ronin, not quite like this one, but another Ronin who had an absolutely legendary run. I'm still gonna keep promoting that video because it was just so good. I titled it the best run I've ever had. And it was so very true. Not clickbait in the slightest. I'm not gonna be swapping my weapon out today. 
on that run, we managed to gather all of the lilies necessary to unlock the boss in this area. So really all we have to do is make our way there and continue to do attempts. For those of you that did not know, we are not locking down the castle at all during this profile run. We are trying to clear up to the boss each time we need to be there, which does make things a little bit difficult in certain areas. Uh, our previous Ronin was able to attack through that wall to get to that target. Ooh, this area is clear. I got to find the right opening for this, which is here. Ah! Oh, I killed all the targets, but then I took one hit. So we're not going to be able to access that chest. That's really unfortunate. There is still a small chance that we might be able to go back and access that. There is actually a relic item that we can uncover. It's a key. And the key is literally used for chests that are locked. So there is a small chance and there are relics in this area. So it, it might happen, but it, it's probably, it's probably not going to happen. Let me dash to the other side of these guys just to avoid as many of those ice projectiles as we can. Take out the bat, dash to the other side of this guy yet again. Oh man, the Ronin mobility feels so good. Now, I will admit I've been playing the Ronin a little bit too much and I will be looking for other classes as we're moving forward to bring into the castle. I mean, when was the last time we saw a knight? Was it episode one? Bro, have I played a knight since then? I don't think so. We do have the ability because of the souls that we've been gathering from doing those challenges, uh, just like the one you're gonna see at the end of the video. We do have the oh, ability to secure one class of our choosing. And I have picked the Ronin for that class to do some challenges on. But funny enough, I haven't selected the locked Ronin, the secured Ronin, since we unlocked the capability of securing a class. <laughs> I've picked the other ones like this one because he was a dwarf and I could get that scar. Uh, moving to the right here should be one of the easiest things we've ever done with that increased dash range. Defeated enemies explode in a spore burst is a phenomenal upgrade. Unfortunately, my resolve is already a little lower than I want it to be. There you see that huge hit, that 175. That is from the antique we started the game with. On our sixth hit, it does increased damage. And if we can line that up to be a crit as well, that crit is gonna do more damage. It's not like a super crit. It's not quite that much, but it is quite a lot. Um, I'm gonna go to the left here. This is a small room. It might be, oh, never mind. It's not a small room at all. We're gonna have to do some fancy jumping here to get to the, t ooh. Ah! Oh, I missed one kick. I had the tempo wrong for half a second. And as a result, we cannot get that chest. You hate to see it. This room is totally completed already. Although it will have a relic in there. Maybe that's one of the keys that I could pick up. Secret in the wall here. We spot it right away. We just have to keep moving through this and we should be fine. That looks a lot scarier than it actually is. Unfortunately, that silver chest only giving us gold, which means... We've probably, ooh, missed the swing. We've probably found most of the collectibles from this area. Our life leech, when we kill an enemy, now healing us for five per enemy. Just last video, it was four, but we keep having successful Ronin runs and it just keeps getting better. You know what? We should throw a mage or two into the rotation here just for the sake of getting the intelligence scaling up a little bit higher. What am I looking at here? It's an elite bat that you that does a little dash. I can't even make out its features. It's just glowing. Uh, that bat, you have to do the downward air jump in order to damage them. Uh, two elites in this room. One is immune to damage, I thought. Oh my God, we're taking such a beating so far. One more at the bottom of the room. Both of these guys are protect. Oh, I didn't see the red thing up there. I was so fixated on the elites. I didn't see that that thing was shooting projectiles at us. Okay. 
Well, we took a lot of damage in here. <laughs> uh, we might be able to heal some of it back, but I don't know, dude. I believe we've already read this. I'm just in here to see if we can get some meat, and it doesn't look like it. Tend to the forest as I tend to my own children. Take only which is needed. Harvest only which is dead or dying. And always cull the poison. Always. I cannot go on. I must escape the noise. Tonight I shall steal away from the village and find a nook high above the cliff's edge. Here I can contemplate in peace. A nook high above the cliff's edge. That is an insight leading us towards something I've never completed before. The reason I've never completed it is because I didn't know how to get up onto said cliff's edge. However, with the Ronin, we might be able to do it. I also think with the Ranger, we could do it fairly easily as well. I just never remember when I have a Ranger. We're gonna kick off the side there, head towards the chest and find the Ammonite weapon. Notice that's not in a silver case. I kind of wish weapons always like it's exciting when you see a silver case or a silver chest on the other edge of the room and you're like, oh man, that's going to have something good in it. I need to get to that. I like that feeling. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. I, I just think it's weird that you could get upgrades out of a, a normal, everyday looking chest that normally just has gold. Speaking of which, the gold that we've amassed this run is pretty respectable considering we're only 12 minutes into this episode and I've taken so much damage. Uh, the gold already at 4,679 and we find some clutch chicken to keep the run going. We're just going to dash over that like it's not even there. This little bat's going to be a problem. I don't want to fight him over by the spikes because I would hit my head on those and take damage. More chicken, 48 HP returned. We're actually back in the run all of a sudden. In order to find that secret room that we just read the lore about, we're going to need to kind of venture over. Uh, maybe it's not to the right. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't have anything to actually back up that with. Hey, dog fell in the water. Nice. Didn't drop any gold, though. Less nice. Let's turn this off. I was expecting there to be a zombie there, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, what if I just... Oh, I was trying to eyeball it. Just guess. Two exits of this room. This one just leads to some antiques that I cannot use right now. We have a mage in here, as well as a guy that I can just jump off the head of the bat dealing more damage because of our antique that's kind of anticlimactic because we one shot those guys anyway so getting extra damage there isn't super beneficial we have found the boss room and i'm looking at the layout here and we're pretty close to the full clear as well uh if we go into the boss room right now we will be healed up to almost full but I'm going to keep looking for that secret. I want to see if we can do it with a Ronin. Hmm, there's a chest hidden in the rock. That's how we get in. Looking to the right, this isn't big enough of an area for what we're looking for. In fact, the layout here doesn't make a lot of sense for what I'm after in general. That damage really sucks because that means we're not going to be at full health for the boss. Unless we kill a lot of enemies flawlessly, <laughs> which... You know, I'm okay at this game, but I don't think I'm that good at this game quite yet. There is another small room over here. We'll just dash right under those traps. Great crit onto a wolf into another fantastic attack. Oh, I love that bonus damage. That is so satisfying when it actually happens. Uh, what's underneath me here? What are you... What am I... Oh, I'm uh, out of range of those. Oh, didn't see the poison charging back up. It's doing it again. Did I just jump through fire projectiles? Was that, was that the best jump I've ever done? Holy crap. Oh, this room to the right looks really promising. It's not the one I'm after though, unfortunately. Uh, that is the room where you unlock double jump. That's the really long room that ventures off to the right-hand side. That's exactly where it should be. That shouldn't be a surprise to us. We know it's on the right-hand side. I'm worried I'm not going to be able to find the Thunder Room, though. Puzzle Challenge. 
Oh, this one, you have to be a dwarf. We encountered this before. Uh, how you do it is um, just dash through here, I think. Oh, you know what's fucking hilarious? Uh, Ronans can skip it. <laughs> uh, the folded rune. Quality, not quantity, increases the armor max block cap. That sounds amazing. That sounds like a phenomenal. What the fuck? You stay back. Ow! 118 damage? What the hell? Ah, oh, oh, God, I'm panicking so bad. I saw that light moving to me under the snow, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And that giant zombie just comes out of the ground. Wait a minute. That's a full clear. No, no doors leading anywhere else inside of the Kregluian Plateau. And that means the room that we just read about with her perch high up, where she goes to contemplate, is not in our version of the castle. That might be another reason I've never found it, huh? That could definitely do it. I do think this boss is one of the ones where if you get the pattern down, you're probably not going to take damage. I believe this is our third attempt on the boss this run. I have extremely low health and significantly lower reach than what I'm used to because I think all of our attempts on this boss have been from the Ronin. You can see we have gotten a just a few points into that damage increase on our talent tree, and you can really tell the difference. This is not a new weapon. This is not like my Ronin getting better. This is just our damage has really gone up. Now, keep in mind that antique does pop off every now and then, but that's not like every attack or anything by any means. We just need to make sure that we're staying away from the boss when she spins in circles. We need to make sure that we have our dash available, the Ronin dash specifically, to get through these big guys. And we learned our lesson the hard way that we need to be close enough to them to make sure we can phase through the entire way. Uh, the way you kill those normally, by the way, is just by bunny hopping and then dashing immediately. You want it to be one fluid motion, kind of like that. Uh, I'll try to show that just in case we get in here without a Ronin. I know, how is that possible? Uh, we will be able to kind of be at least a little prepared for that attack. Uh, second phase is exactly the same if you haven't seen our boss attempts yet. The only thing that changes is there's area denial all of a sudden, which does make things a bit more hectic for sure. Uh, let me go to this side. Boss is in a good spot here. We just dash through, get a nice hit in there. Nice big crit. And we can push the phase. Oof, but right is an ad spawn, so that's a little less than ideal. I was trying to sneak a little bit of damage in while I could. My general strategy is to clear these two areas. And then, like, I usually feel a little bit of pressure to actually do damage here, but I'm just going to actively block out that pressure. That pressure isn't real. We haven't had any pressure to deal damage to the boss this entire run, and that doesn't change now. What does change is um, avoiding some of this stuff can be a... Oh, oh, and the dash through there does make things a little more complicated. So I guess you do kind of want to be in a situation where you are still actively turning those red zones off for the bunny hop to get through those walls. But hey, lesson learned. We can apply that next time. Great run, full cleared the Kruguian Plateau. That's only our second full clear ever and pretty good attempts on the boss. We've been consistently hitting phase two there. And well, it's only a matter of time now. Her days are numbered. Ronin, Ronin almost leveling up to level six. And hey, don't forget, we still have our boss clear for the challenge coming up if you want to see it. Uh, colorblind and clumsy. Those are not bad traits. I don't think I want to bring a chef into that fight, though, because there's no projectiles for me to actually send in the other direction. However, a duelist could do a lot of good there. A lot of good there. As far as what we want to skill up, you know what? Let's bring a new class into the equation. One of the newest to enter the castle. This is the jester and i don't know how to play it 
<laughs> or the bard. The battlefield is your theater. Set the stage with a beautiful ballad or improvise a tale while you dance around your foes. There is only one rule to bard. A to one rule bards abide by, and that is to leave no witnesses. And I am gonna switch over to that bard first thing now. Super strange class, not sure really how to approach that, but let's not forget, we have some really good equipment to add in. Not only this new weapon, which should be a damage increase, it's an armor increase and a damage decrease. That's worth it. That is definitely worth it. However, we need to add uh, 10 pounds to our character. So let's buy that. That was a pretty hefty chunk of money. Can we get a weight increase here? Yes, we can. And that one's actually an actual weight increase and not a percentage increase. Is that enough? Just barely. Just capping out, that is enough. We also have a new piece of the warden set somewhere, right? Yeah, the cape. That's a decrease in intelligence, but a weight increase. We could, since we've been using the Scholar Cape pretty consistently, increase the amount of intelligence damage that this gives with a really easy upgrade. And this gives us a reason to actually spend some of that iron that we've been accumulating. So, I, oh, it'll make it too heavy. Oh, it adds 10 pounds. I didn't see that part. I didn't see that part. If it adds more weight, then I can't equip it at all. So we're going to hold off on that. Is the Warden weapon better damage? It is only slightly. Oh, yeah, that's the one we were wearing before. Only two damage. For some reason, I had it in the back of my head that I was actually using the leather plus one, but I don't think that's actually the case. Spin kick damage also scales with your intelligence stat. So we would get a damage increase to the spin kick right away because the cape that we're wearing gives a decent amount of int. You know what I want to do, though? We're going to do this instead. Study Hall. Not only does it give us more intelligence and more spell damage, it also means when we find chicken, it's going to heal us for more. And that is going to be the end of today's video. Stick around for a couple minutes if you want to see our challenge clear on the Ronin. But... That's it for me today, boys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.